Could you tell me what's the common thing between these dishes? Well, they're very typical dishes from Europe and Asia, and they all use tomatoes. But as much as we associate tomatoes with Italian food, the tomato is not European, it's American. And by that I mean the continent named America, not the United States of America. So how did a tomato get so established in European cuisine? And how did it take over the world? But first, let's see where the tomato actually comes from. It is believed that South America is the birthplace of the tomato and that it eventually made its way into Mesoamerica, which was a region that extended from central Mexico to Central America. It is not known if it was trading, migration, or a combination of both, but by 500 BC the tomato was already being cultivated by the many civilizations in the region. Actually, the word tomato can find its way back to these cultures. Tomato comes from the Spanish word tomate, which came from the Nahuatl word tomat. Oh, Nahuatl was the language the Aztec spoke. Free fact, right there. Eventually, the Spanish came at the beginning of the 16th century and by playing a little imperial conquista, they took control of all of this. It is believed the conquistadores ate it Aztec style and developed a taste for it, so on their way back home they didn't just bring gold, silver or... slaves. But they also brought the tomato. And here is where it gets tricky, because now that it's in Europe, the tomato was not accepted that easily. Its plant was widely recognized as a nightshade, which is poisonous, and its fruit to be a type of eggplant, and also poisonous. Oh, by the way, the tomato is a fruit, not a vegetable. There you have another free fact. So, returning to Europe, because of the poisonous thing, the tomato was not widely eaten except for Spain and maybe Portugal. Its scientific name, Lycopersicum, means wolf peach, maybe to make it clear that it was not something you'd want to ingest. Europeans didn't even know what it was. One of the first mentions of its existence comes from Italian botanist Pietro Andrea Mattioli in 1544 in his herbal De la Historia e Materia Medicinale, which is a book containing names and descriptions of plants. The first recipe involving tomatoes didn't come until 1692 in an early Italian cookbook called Lo Scalco alla Moderna, written by Antonio Latini in Naples. In this book, we can find the earliest mention of tomato sauce in record, called by Latinias sauce a la española, or Spanish-style sauce. That more or less gives us the notion that the tomato had already a place in Spanish cuisine and that it was starting to get popularity in Italy, which later developed its own recipes and variants of the plant. However, that was not the case in the rest of Europe. English botanist John Gerard saw the tomato as some fit for eating, well, because poison and his work was considered holy scripture in Northern Europe, so it was not until the 18th century when it was common to see tomatoes in food around that region. As for how it spread to the rest of the world, well, empires. Remember the previous video? Throughout history, empires have shown to be very good at two specific things, expanding and collapsing. So in all that expanding, Spain brought the tomato along for the right when it conquered the Philippines, signaling its introduction into Asia. And it's believed that by trading with them, the tomato made its way into China, where they called it barbarian eggplant. Yeah, they used to call barbarian all the imports from Europe at the time. I guess they weren't the biggest fans? I wonder why. Portugal didn't take long to follow on its neighbor's steps and spread the tomato throughout its colonies in Africa and India. Even today, the Bengal name for tomato means foreign eggplant. What's with the eggplant? I really don't see the resemblance. And hear this, even as the tomato was from America, remember the continent, not the country, it didn't make its way into North America until mid-18th century thanks to the British. Third free fact. It was said that Thomas Jefferson tried one in Paris and liked it so much that he sent the seeds to the United States to be planted. Lastly, if we take into account the massive European migration to the US that occurred between the 19th and 20th century, you can see how the tomato started to gain influence there. Liberty Miss, who began as a symbol of friendship between two nations, was to welcome millions of immigrants who eagerly flooded America's shores in search of the political...
Nowadays, we cannot imagine our diets without tomatoes. We can find it in dishes around the globe, cooked and prepared in an infinite number of ways, its legacy and name a remnant of an ancient culture. What was thought to be a dangerous and poisonous plant ended up in almost every kitchen, in a myriad of presentations. We have sauces, pizza, gazpacho, soups, burgers, pasta, curry, lasagna, ketchup. Ketchup? Do not forget to leave a like and a comment, and if you like pizza as much as I do, please subscribe, share this video with your pasta-loving friends, and don't forget to check the other ones. Follow me on Instagram to get bonus facts, and I hope to see you in the next video. Have a nice one, and goodbye.